Mr. Satan is absolutely amazing! Okay, I'll show you guys how to solve this system of differential equations. And to do so, we are going to first write this down into the order that we want first. So what I mean by that is, I want to have the x prime and then the x term together, and then the y prime and then the y term together, everything else onto the other side, all right? So let's do so for the first equation. Here we will have just x prime, and then we have the plus 2x, and then plus y prime. And since there's no y, let me just leave a space right here, and this is equal to 0. And now for the second equation, we have x prime right here, and then this is minus x, and then plus y prime, and then this is minus y, and this is equal to sine t, like this. And now, the next step is, we'll change notation. Instead of the prime notation, we are going to use the capital D notation, so for the operator, all right, for the differential operator. So what I mean by that is, look at this, we have x prime plus 2x. This right here is the derivative of x, right? So I will just change this into capital D, that's the first derivative. And we have plus 2x, well it has no derivative, so I will just write down plus 2. And now this is the new operator notation that we'll be using for x prime plus 2x. Well, this right here is applying to the x, so I'll put down a bracket x like that. And then next, I will just do the same thing for the rest right here. So here we have plus y prime, that's the first derivative, so I'll just write this down as plus d right here, and this is with y, like this, okay? And this is equal to 0. And now, for this one, you see, we will have to do d minus 1, and then this is with x. And then this right here is also derivative and then minus 1, right? So it's d minus 1 as well, and this is a plus in between, and this is with the y, and we have this equal to sine t. Okay? Now, you see, all the x terms are lined up, all the y terms are lined up, and then everything else is on the other side. Well, to eliminate, we have choice. You can choose to eliminate either x or y. Up to you. Uh, as we can see, the things in front of the y right here is just d and then d minus 1. It's smaller, right? So I will just choose to eliminate y first. To do so, you see, Right here we have d, right here we have d minus 1. So let me just multiply. Technically, it's not really a multiplication, but it works almost the same, okay? So I'll just use the word multiplying throughout uh, the video. I'll just multiply the first equation by d minus 1. So let me put that down right here, big parentheses, and then we have this d minus 1, okay? And then for the second equation, I will just take all this and you see, I need to have a d right here, right? So let me multiply by d. However, uh, I don't want to just have d minus 1, d, d, and d minus 1. I'm going to make this right here negative, so that when I add them up together, one's positive, the other one's negative, they'll cancel each other out. That would be nice, right? Okay, so right here, uh, let me once again just show you guys these two equations are related. Let me just do this times that, and let me just write it down without multiplying out first. Let me just put this down as d minus 1 times d plus 2. And this is still with x, right? And then now, d minus 1 and d, let me put it down like this first, plus d minus 1 and d like this, and then this is with y like that. Small remark before we go, uh, before we continue. D minus 1 times D, I put it down this, right? If you want to write it down as D first and then parentheses D minus 1, it's okay. The water doesn't matter because right here we don't have constants, right? Just regular numbers, no T at all. Anyways, this times 0 it is still going to be 0, so that's good. Next, negative D and that, so let me just put down negative D times D minus 1, and this is with X and then negative d and that, so let me just write it down, negative d times that, which is d minus 1, and then this is with y, and this is equal to negative d and that, so let me put it down, negative d, and this is working with sine of t, right? All right, now, as we can see, focusing on y, because we wanted to eliminate y, right? Here we have d minus 1d, and here we have d, d minus 1. As I mentioned earlier, the order doesn't matter because here we only have constants. 
and this is positive, this is negative. So now, when I combine these two equations, you know the usual deal. This and that will cancel each other out completely. That's wonderful, isn't it? And now, we're just going to just multiply this out and then put it down and then add them up, right? Okay, now, you see, d minus 1 times d plus 2. As I said again, they're just constants, so it works the same as usual multiplication of polynomial. So we see d times d is d squared. Let me just do this right here for you guys. d squared right here, right? And then d times 2 is 2d, but you combine with negative d, so you have plus d. And then negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. So now this is the new part right here for this x here, okay? And I also have to work this out. But a small hint is that um, let me just multiply the d inside. So let me just keep the minus as the minus here, okay? The minus is still here. And then let me just distribute the d in here. d times d is d squared. And then I still have to use the parentheses because I didn't distribute negative yet, right? So d squared, d times negative 1 is negative d. And once again, I'm just multiplying d right here. And you'll see why I want to do that. I think it's easier to see uh, in terms of the differential, the differential operator. So anyways, d, d, this d squared and d negative 1 is still negative d. And this is with x. Okay. I haven't talked about the d yet, so let me leave this as how it is, because 0 combined with that is still negative d, and this is acting on sine t. Here's the deal. Now this is what we have, and now let's see what's going on. Uh, depending how you want to look at it, you can look at it from right to left or left to right. Okay, not so bad either way. So if you look at this from right to left like this, this is saying d squared uh, acting on x d squared, this notation means you are going to differentiate twice. I will differentiate twice with x function. x is a function of t, right? So you know this right here will give you x double prime, okay? x double prime. And then this and that, that tell you you differentiate x, which is you add it with x prime. This right here, <laughs> it's a, uh, you don't differentiate, you just do negative 2 times x, which is negative 2x, okay? Just like that. And now you see right here, this is the reason why I didn't want to distribute negative because I think this is more clear. Uh, I'm just going to do it like backwards. So you see, this is going to be x and d squared. d squared x means you have second derivative. And then this and that will be negative x prime, right? You differentiate x one time. But now I will distribute the negative. So negative times the x double prime will be negative x double prime. Negative times this negative will give you positive, okay? So I'm distributing the negative right here like this, okay? So here we have negative x double prime plus x prime. Lastly, here we will have, this is just a negative, let me write it down. But you see, I'm doing this. I'm differentiating sine t. The derivative of sine t is cosine t, okay? But I still have this negative I have to maintain. So altogether is negative cosine t. And now this is pretty much what we have. But of course, we can do a few things right here. Because as we can see, x double prime, x double prime, they cancel. And this and that, x prime plus another x prime, we can come by like terms, right? So here we are saying 2x prime, and then this is minus 2x. This is equal to negative cosine t, OK? And now, after you have eliminated the y, you end up with this. This is just a first order differential equation, and this is doable, right? It's just x. And because this is x prime, and this is just x to the first power, this is linear. You can solve it by uh, using the integrating factor that we have seen in the previous chapter, or you can do method of undetermined coefficient as well. Up to you. I will have another video for you guys down below in the description because um, right here, let me just tell you guys what the answer is, okay? So that way I can uh, make this easier for us in this video. So anyways, you solve this, you watch the video. Once again, the link is in the description. X will be C1 e to the t, and then we add it with 1 over 4 cosine t, and we minus 1 over 4 sine t, like that. This is the function 
Okay, this is the x function. And let me just emphasize x is the function of time. So let me put down x of t like this. This is what we need. Okay. Okay, so we're done for one part for the x. Now, of course, we'll start to figure out the y. How can we do so though? Well, uh, you have a few choices. Go back to the original. Now you know the x. It's easier to do it this way. Do substitution, okay? So what you want to do is, okay, you have the x equation now, the x function. You can plug in this into either the first equation or the second equation. Of course, you'll see that the first equation is easier, right? So now you see right here, let me just put this down right here. Let me just isolate the y prime here. You know, y prime will be, let me move this to the other side. So we will have negative x prime, and then let me move this to the other side as well. That's minus 2x, isn't it? Well, if I can just differentiate this one time and then plug in the derivative right here, and I'll plug in the original right here, I can still solve for y, isn't it? So with that being said, let me just differentiate this right here down below. So we know based on that, x prime will be the derivative of c1 e to the t. It's because it is c1 e to the t. And the derivative of this is going to be negative 1 over 4 sine t. And the derivative of this is going to be negative 1 over 4 cosine t, right? The derivative of sine is cosine, things like that. Now, I'll plug in this into here, so we will have y prime to be negative x prime, which is that we have the c1 e to the t minus 1 over 4 sine t, and then minus 1 over 4 cosine t, like that. And then we have to minus 2 times the original x, which is that. So let me put this down, c1 e to the t plus 1 over 4 cosine t and then minus 1 over 4 sine t okay seriously this way is much easier because um, at the end of the day you don't have to deal with like a uh, unnecessary extra constants okay but anyways um, on the right hand side we can do some algebra to combine terms and things like that so that's what we'll do first on the left hand side we still have y prime though so you can expect we have to integrate at the end. But anyways, let's see what we have here. Let's see this right here. It's going to give me negative c1, isn't it? Let me just put that down. And we have the e to the t right here as well, right? Negative c1 e to the t. But right here, if you multiply this, you get negative 2 c1 e to the t. So this and that together, that will give us negative 3 c1 e to the t. Okay, and then you see this times that, negative times negative becomes positive 1 over 4 sine t. And do we have any sine t term right here? Yes, we do, here times here, right? Negative 2 times negative 1 over 4 sine t. Well, I'm going to put this down as plus 2 over 4 sine t. Right? Negative 2 times negative 1 over 4. Uh, is 2 over 4 and then sine t. You may be laughing at me, how come I didn't reduce the fraction, but the genius part is that 1 over 4 plus 2 over 4 is so much easier to do. So this together it is 3 over 4 sine t. Okay? Next, we do this times that, which is going to be positive now. Right? Positive 1, this is also positive by the way. Positive 1 over 4 cosine t. And this times that, negative 2 times that is negative 2 over 4 cosine t. 1 over 4 sine t, sorry, 1 over 4 cosine t minus 2 over 4 cosine t. Of course, we can get negative 1 over 4 cosine t. Okay, wonderful, isn't it? But we're not done yet because this is y prime. But it's, it's okay because we can just now integrate both sides. And y is a function of t, if you want, you can write this as dy dt. So you know when you integrate both sides, you do it with respect to t. And on the right hand side, everything is in terms of t already, so you can just go ahead and do so, right? When we do that, we get y, pro well, we would get just y. We'll just get y right here. And this is going to give me 
Uh, the integral of this right here is just okay. Nothing too crazy because e to the something is just e to the something, right? And the integral of e to the t is just e to the t. I don't have to divide by uh, any weird number. So this right here is just going to be negative 3c1 e to the t. And next, we integrate this. Integral of sine t is negative cosine, right? Integral of sine is negative cosine. And this constant multiple stays the same, so we have 3 over 4 right here. And next, we integrate cosine. That will give us positive sine. So write this down. This is positive sine t. Well, originally it was negative, but it was positive cosine earlier, so positive times negative is still negative. And we have 1 over 4. That's a constant multiple, right? And this is what we have. But you see, when we integrate both sides, Technically, I should add another constant, right? So we put on plus C2, like this. So ladies and gentlemen, as we can see, we got a y function right here. However, if you check the answer in the back of the book, you will see that they only have these three terms. They do not have the C2 at the end. And the reason for that is because you get C2 is actually equal to 0. However, let me just tell you guys that if you box this right here, including the C2 for your answer, for the y right here, it's totally okay. And here you have the y, here you have the x. You solved it, the system of differential equation right there. And now let me just say a few more words uh, for how come c2 is equal to 0. Well, how do you get that? What we do is, okay, we plug in x, x prime, y, and then you also have to differentiate y to get y prime, okay? You plug in all that into the second equation here. Earlier, we used it the first one, right? That was the first equation. But once again, plugging x, x prime, y, y prime into the second differential equation, and you will see that c2, okay, will be left over on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, you don't have any constant. So c2, in fact, is equal to 0. However, once again, if you include the c2 in your y equation, that would be totally okay. But anyways, that's it.